Hello and welcome to the 2020 National Museum of Transportation's virtual membership meeting. We, at the beginning of the year here, we really had a great plans and felt there was a great opportunities for a very productive year. We were very optimistic. But as you know, in, as of uh, February and March, the 100 year pandemic arrived. We had a lot of good plans and a lot of good efforts that we wanted to make and put together. Now, the reason we're having this virtual meeting versus in person is obviously li living with the mandates established by our uh, local government. So what comes down to the basic line is that we were closed from mid-March to mid-June. We were in compliance with the government mandates. And since then, when we reopened, we have noticed a very significant change, a reduction in our traffic flow of guests and customers. We've had only one third of the people that we normally receive in our gates to be as our guests and visitors. Revenue streams obviously were upset quite significantly, but we moved forward anyway. Even with the downtime, the staff, the people here at the museum prepared the various places, services, paintings, and so forth for when we did reopen, it would be safer for everyone to uh, visit. So right now, let's go on with the meeting and let's have a, the introduction of our uh, nominating committee with Lee Rotman. Good afternoon, I'm Lee Rotman. I'm the chairman of the nominating committee for the National Museum of Transportation. And I'm standing in front of the Aero Train, which we are currently restoring. And let me give you a couple of facts about that. One of the things that's very interesting is we've got to paint this engine in cars. And believe it or not, the paint, the silver paint, costs $300 a gallon. And I certainly hope we don't have to do this too many times. But anyway, the Aero Train is a, it was a concept passenger train. It was manufactured by General Motors. They had a, uh, an appearance of more like a bus. And that was one of the reasons that it didn't do very well is because everybody thought it looked like a bus and it rode like one. And we're looking forward to getting it restored. A lot of people like to take a look at it and come out and we want them to be able to walk through it. But what I'm really here for today is to give you the proxy statement of the board members who are coming on the board and other members who are going to be voted to continue their involvement with the board. Let me start by saying I want to nominate and appoint Dr. Daryl Ross, Lee Rotman, and Ted Williams as my attorneys or proxies, and each of them with full power to act without the others to represent me and cast my vote by proxy at the National Museum of Transportation annual meeting of the membership, Tuesday, December the 8th, 2020, or at any adjournment thereof as fully and with the same effect as I might or could do personally present at such meeting, thereby ratifying and confirming his or her vote on the matters to be presented at said meeting. Without limiting the general authorization and power the hereby given and proxies are specifically directed to vote for the following, except as indicated on this reply form on the election of directors to be submitted at the meeting. Terms expiring December 31st, 2023. That's a long time. Nominated for the first term, Amy Burke Kemper, Dr. Flint Fowler, David Kohler, and Jack Stein. Terms expiring December 31st, 2023. Not renominated to the board, Charlie Bain, John Brophy, Richard Chenault, and Charlie Taylor. The folks that are being nominated or renominated for membership to the board of directors are also going to be giving you a discussion of their qualifications. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jack Stein and I'm a candidate for the board of directors here at the National Museum of Transportation. I'm standing here in front of the Norfolk and Western Y6A 2156. The Norfolk and Western Railroad built this locomotive at its shops in Roanoke, Virginia in 1942. Its job was to haul coal through Virginia and West Virginia. It is a compound articulated locomotive 
which means that it has one large boiler that supplies steam to two engines. The Y6A was on loan to the Virginia Museum of Transportation in Roanoke for five years, and it returned here to the museum in St. Louis this year, and we're thrilled to have it back. I have been visiting the museum here in West St. Louis since 1971 when I first started coming with my children. I continue to come today uh, with my youngest grandsons who are four and one and a half and I enjoy that experience as much as I did back in 1971. I started here in 1971 working for Anheuser-Busch and spent my career there for 32 years. I am a civil and environmental engineer by training and worked at Anheuser-Busch in the area of environmental affairs and plant site selection. I am thrilled to be nominated to serve on the board of directors here at the National Museum of Transportation and appreciate your support. Hi, I'm David Kohler, one of the nominees for the board of directors. This is a 1965 Divco twin model U. It delivered dairy products throughout St. Louis from the late 1960s through the 1980s. Our volunteers completely restored this truck and donated over a thousand hours on this project. My kids used to love coming to this museum to see the cars and the trains, and they got to see how the technology evolved over time. When children come here, it stimulates their minds, their curiosity, and their desire to know how things work. This museum is a great educational facility. Hello, my name is John Brophy. I've been on the board here at the museum for five years. My primary responsibility is a lot of the model railroad activity that goes on. I've been responsible for designing and custom building the Desley layout behind us along with seven other people, volunteers here. Um, also uh, taken in a lot of donations for the museum, including the HO layout in the Barrett Station, which runs automatically and kids can go in and start. Uh, worked with Terry quite a bit to take donations of model train goods that are given to us and also work with Terry and Teresa on those donations. That's not my only involvement at the museum. I've been involved with the real trains also. Uh, everything from uh, power washing to just hanging out with the trains. Lifelong model railroader, lifelong railroader. Love the museum. Hope to keep seeing it going. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Richard Chenault. I've been a board member here at the museum for about four years. I also volunteer with the streetcar group. Our streetcar group consists of all the volunteers. They've restored four streetcars to operation. They're working on number five. Uh, this car was built in 1914 here in St. Louis. It's been out here at the museum since the 1950s. It sat outside in the weather for about 40 years and a group decided to see if they could make it run again. So it took several years, but uh, they got it up and running and it's been out here ever since, uh, giving rides on the weekends. Uh, we really appreciate all the support we've gotten from the members over the years. The donations have uh, kept these cars running and the support that we've received from the museum. So thank you very much. There's no question that the year of 2020 has been a full of fear and uncertainties. But you know, here at the museum, we still move forward. We had the McDonald exhibit open. We've also had the Y6A, the locomotive 
that we lent to the Virginia Museum of Transportation, a five-year rental that they kept. We had the aero re restoration, the aero train is being restored, and the exhibit signage has been improved. We received a $44,000 grant from the federal government just for that purpose. You know, right here I'm standing by the Sanford and McDonald, Sandy McDonald. He played a significant role in the development of our community and our country. And we thank his son, uh, Randy, for giving us the funds and monies to uh, exhibit and make the exhibit come to fruition. It's no question that in 2020, we really began with a prepared report and a vision report to, to make the whole year make a good profitable uh, endeavor that we treat our customers and guests so well that it would really be a great year. Let's pause for a moment and go to that video and take a look and we'll be right back after the video plays. Welcome to the National Museum of Transportation, where a historic past is moving us forward into a bright future. Today, let's take a ride into that vision of tomorrow, where future generations are able to further recognize, appreciate, and learn about the significant role that transportation played in the development of our country and in our daily lives. But first, let's take a brief look in the rearview mirror. The National Museum of Transportation was started in 1944 by Dr. John Roberts, his wife Mary, and several other community volunteers. In 1979, St. Louis County assumed ownership of the museum and the facility was operated by the St. Louis County Government Department of Parks and Recreation. Then on January 1st, 2017, the museum returned to private ownership, operating as a 501c3 organization which is what we maintain today. Our mission is to be the leader in protecting and interpreting North American transportation heritage. As stewards of our heritage, we will provide engaging education programs, interactive and interpretive exhibits, and preserve transportation history for generations to come. Our ultimate goal is to be able to teach our children and our children's children about the significant impact that transportation has had on our world. With such an important goal, we knew it was critical to lay a strong foundation to ensure the success of the journey ahead. So where do we begin? First, we had to assess the facilities and overall campus. We had to take a long look in the mirror and ask ourselves a plethora of important questions. What is the National Museum of Transportation? And how do our visitors and members feel about the museum? We conducted a feasibility study to gauge how successful our fundraising efforts would be and determine which funding prospects the museum should approach. In 2019, we hired a development staff to ensure that our new long-range fundraising goals will be met. And then we finally addressed the immediate infrastructure improvements that will financially and operationally benefit the museum. Together, our staff and volunteers are laying the foundation for our bright future. Now that we've laid our foundation, let's take a look at our 2020 vision of the future for the National Museum of Transportation. What are we doing today to ensure that a child visiting the museum in 2070 will have the opportunity to see, touch, observe, and learn about the history of transportation. Now is the time to build. We have laid a strong foundation, and now we must build a suitable ship to carry us on our mission. We have identified four exciting primary capital improvement construction projects that we'd like to share with you, and with your help, bring to life in the coming years. One. Construction of a storage facility on site, enabling the museum to have adequate climate controlled storage facilities on campus for all artifacts in our collection. 
This is imperative if we want to live out our mission of preserving the history that we want to continue to share with future generations. Two, construction of a pavilion over the lower four tracks of rail equipment, protecting many sole surviving and one-of-a-kind artifacts for future generations. Three, completion of the working trolley line to the Earl C. Lindbergh Automobile Building. This will monumentally enhance the visitor experience and also serve as a people mover, a truly important and exciting addition to the museum. Four, an expansion of the William R. and Laura Rand Orthwine Education and Visitor Center and expanding the indoor exhibit space. This would finally give us the area we need to expand our offerings and make the visitor center the beloved space we envision for years to come. The order of completion for these four projects will be dictated by funding, but we believe these improvements are necessary in order to reach our goals. Alongside our construction efforts, we are excited to announce our other multi-year campus betterment projects that we are working to bring to life. In addition to our capital improvements, we have also moved to expand our board members in 2020. We are exploring opportunities to add board members representing major companies in the community and expand diversity within the board. We are also adding new staff members to better facilitate our growth. So now that we have created a strong foundation and developed a solid blueprint for our ship, what will ensure our success? It takes all of us working together to steer our ship towards our goals. All the spokes within the wheel must continue to contribute and be recognized equally in order to move us forward into our bright future. Let's dive in and see how each section will work to contribute to our vision in 2020. Events and Outreach Many of our successful new initiatives from 2019 like Friend Fridays, where we invite other cultural and civic institution members to the museum, as well as the Acoustic Music Festival, will continue in 2020, alongside our various long-standing events. New 2020 initiatives will include Museum Friends and Family Days, the Wood, Wheels, and Whiskey fundraising event, and the Easter Egg Scramble. Education. All aboard. This new initiative ensures that all children can visit the museum regardless of their ability to pay. Members of the community can sponsor a child's visit for $8.50. Sponsored tickets will be given to underserved children, those in foster care, or those experiencing medical care. We will also offer facilitated field trips, preschool through middle school, the Creation Station, a hands-on learning environment for children five and under, ONI Travels, an online geography learning lesson of visits around the world, a 2020 speaker series, self-guided educational visits for summer groups, homeschoolers, and scouts, off-site educational programming with St. Louis County Library, preschools, and elementary schools and community organizations. Also in 2020, we will meet Speedy McWheels, a new YouTube personality used to introduce young learners to the National Museum of Transportation. Exhibits and Interpretation Various new exhibits and features will also be added, including Transportation Ecology Hubs, the Sanford and McDonald Tribute Exhibit, Work and the Vehicles That Get the Job Done Exhibit, Fisher Body Exhibit. Steam stops will be placed at various artifacts and provide children with critical thinking challenges. In addition, 
All outdoor exhibits will have a new interpretive sign. Restoration and Preservation Here is a working list of where all artifacts in the restoration process stand. library, and archives. Our team accomplished a lot in 2019, exceeding many of our goals. In 2020, we plan to accomplish even more with these objectives. Grounds, facilities, and landscaping. In 2020, we're looking to add shipping containers to store items currently in restoration shop, adding additional space in the restoration shop, install new entrance keypads to buildings, clean up areas around the trolley building, library building, and restoration shops, clean up and landscape the area at the Barrett's Tunnel entrance, and install landmark signage and seal the lower four tracks and remaining blacktop areas. Overall, landscaping volunteers will also continue to oversee beautification projects at the museum. Guest Services One of our main goals for 2020 is to explore new people-moving opportunities for guests as they traverse from Level 1 to Level 2 to Level 3 on the museum campus. People. We will continue to improve communications both internally and externally. New to 2020, we will print our newsletter three times annually and introduce an annual report. We will also survey guests and members to learn more about them and where we can improve. Tom and Joan James will oversee our ambassador training and Barb and Ken Velton will continue to oversee our volunteer program. April Anderson will oversee the DRIVE volunteer program for students between ages 15 and 24. If we all work together, we will steer our ship into the horizon of our bright future. One storm that we will have to weather is the financial gap that we will face in 2022. As part of the transfer agreement, the document that changed museum ownership in 2017, the museum receives a stipend from St. Louis County. This stipend decreases annually over a five-year period. Beginning in January 2022, the museum will no longer receive this payment. What will the museum do to close this financial gap? Step 1. Our development staff, hired in 2019, is set to explore funding opportunities and forecast future revenue streams. We will grow the endowment account. Annual income from the endowment account can be used for the betterment of the museum. Establishment of the Daniel Nason Fund is underway. This is an area that donors can contribute to for general operating purposes. Increase member prices and increase the number of members by 12% annually. We will establish the All Aboard program Donations to this program will be recognized in the general operating account. We will increase museum attendance through increased advertising, special events, and special event sponsors. We will submit grants for general operating purposes. The capital campaign account will reimburse the operating account. The NMOT operating account funded nearly $200,000 in capital expenses this will enable us to increase our reserve funding for years 6, 7, and beyond after the transfer agreement. We will explore and implement cost efficiencies. And in 2021 and beyond, we will implement an additional increase in admission, the miniature train, and other attractions. We will continue to focus on finding the right prospects to help us achieve sustainable long-term viability and visibility as a top museum tourist attraction, and educational facility. 
We will begin consensus building at every level. What partnerships are available for joint program building efforts or funding opportunities? We will also promote self-evaluation for every stakeholder, donor, board member, staff, and volunteer. Ask yourself, what are you doing today to ensure the museum will be a world-class facility, housing a world-class collection for all the world to see in 2070? We have laid a foundation. It is time to build. And by working together, we can reach our goals in 2020 and beyond. Together, we can be stewards of our heritage and teach our children and our children's children about the significant role that transportation has played in the development of our country and the impact that it has in our daily lives. Together, we have the power to move forward. There's no doubt that uh, the year 2020 has been a year of challenges and we made it work. We were closed three months from mid-March until mid-June, and we preserved and pursued funding for all those months that we were closed because at a later date, we can order the tickets that you can have to come in and register in advance. Auctions, we had auctions online, raffles. We received some grants. We worked hard at putting the whole uh, museum back and keep it on its feet. Buildings and grounds were maintained, paintings were done, especially when people were not here as guests or customers of ours. You know, we were closed for those three months, but everybody worked hard and we were ready when we reopened on June 15th. The COVID had kept a damper on things and it still does in some regard with regulations. But we also opened a new exhibit called Vehicles That Get the Job Done. So we're approaching now the holiday season and we're hopeful that you will definitely come and visit us You'll find a, an atmosphere of happiness, joys, traditions. And you know, our accounting staff also worked hard while we were closed. And we worked with our independent outside auditor. And if you would like to see the 2019 audits, it's available for review at our tnmot.org website. Also, we've got the Desmond Lee model train exhibit that's up and running in the Lindbergh building. The downtown famous Bar Macy's uh, Train exhibit is going to be in the Orthwine Center, where we'll have the Santa will be here on the holidays. We have live reindeer. So just visit the tnmot.org uh, website and make your reservations because we do want to manage the, the attendance of people so we keep that distance and everything else that's regulated now by our f uh, federal and state and local government. So we're looking forward to 2021. We hope that everything will return to normal. So. Needless to say, we hope to see you soon.